I need the copper from these fuses for another project I'm working on, and later in this video I'll open up a couple of these and show you what's inside. But let's start by taking a look at some common types of fuses and how they work. Fuses are a relatively simple component, which are commonly used in electrical circuits as a safety measure that protects the circuitry against surges of excess current. If there is a surging current, the fuse is designed to be a weak link which will blow and break the circuit when the current exceeds a specific threshold, and that in turn protects other components from being damaged and prevents short circuits and hazards like fire. The point at which a fuse blows is said to be its braking capacity, and once it's blown and has interrupted the current flow, it becomes what's known as an open fuse. The current rating of a fuse is usually printed or stamped on its casing, and is the maximum flow that it should be capable of withstanding on a continuous basis. Likewise, the voltage rating of a fuse is the maximum voltage at which the fuse element should be able to melt in a predictable manner. And what that means is that when there is an overload of excess current, the element should melt and interrupt the circuit in a safe manner. If the voltage supply is higher than the rating on the fuse, the remaining piece of the element can potentially form an arc that sustains some degree of electrical flow. Fuses and circuit breakers have a similar function in that both are designed to break electrical circuits in the event of a surge or a short circuit. The key difference though is that circuit breakers act as a switch of sorts, and once flipped they can easily be reset. Most fuses though are single use and would need to be replaced once they've blown. Cartridge fuses are probably one of the most familiar and common types of fuse that you can find them being used in lots of different applications. The cartridge or the fuse housing can be made from different non-conductive materials such as uh, ceramic, glass, and porcelain. Older high amperage fuses were actually packaged often with paper or cardboard tube. Glass cartridges allow you to more easily inspect them and see visually whether it has blown and needs replacing, but the main purpose of the housing is to provide insulation to the element and thermal resistance. Cartridge fuses have a contact point or end caps on each end, which are basically metallic terminals that allow the fuse to be connected to the circuit. The internal fuse element is essentially a resistor of sorts and is responsible for carrying the electric current through the fuse. The element is typically a thin wire made from copper, silver, aluminium or zinc and this can vary depending on how much current it needs to be able to handle and how fast the fuse is expected to blow. The time it takes for a particular fuse to blow is called the fuse speed. The main speeds you're likely to encounter are very fast acting, fast acting, medium acting, and slow acting, or delay fuses. These speeds aren't standardized in any kind of way and sometimes go by other names, but you get the basic point. Deciding what speed at which the fuse blows really comes down to the specific application. If you're dealing with sensitive circuitry and components, you may need a fuse that is very fast acting that will immediately interrupt the current flowing to the circuit. Slow acting fuses include a, a delay mechanism that allows for a short low power electrical surge to pass through the circuit without the fuse blowing. And they're useful for applications like fluorescent bulbs or electric motors where you might expect higher than normal current draw for a short period of time. If we take a quick look in the back of my digital multimeter here, you can see the internal circuitry is being protected by a couple of different fuses, which are there to protect it from over voltage and over current conditions. Often in fuses like these, the housing is made from ceramic or fiber glass and is packed with grains of pure silica sand. The silica is there as it can absorb energy and is able to quench uh, any kind of electrical arc that might form when the fuse breaks, which ensures that the circuit is fully disconnected. Here's another type of fuse, a through hole or axial lead fuse, which is designed to be soldered to a circuit board. Often these are used to provide a, an additional layer of protection to the circuitry in the event that other safety measures and fuses fail for some reason. This particular design has a glass housing, but you can get these with ceramic housings too, and they actually very closely resemble a resistor at first glance. AC fuses, as you would expect, are specifically designed for use with alternating current and are more resistant to electrical arcs when the fuse blows than, say, a DC fuse would be. 
they can also typically cope with higher voltages as well. DC fuses, again, as you would expect, are specifically designed for direct current circuits. Here's another type of fuse that is probably very familiar to most people because they're used in cars. I should point out there are different types of automotive fuse, but these are the most widely used and are blade type fuses. These are so named because of the blade style and the blades are inserted into a plug or socket. These blade fuses come in various sizes but are color coded for easy identification. Here's an example of what's known as an inline fuse holder which is designed to be inserted into a length of wire and as you can see here they have a plastic cap which can be closed over the holder when in this particular case a blade fuse has been installed. If you're dealing with non-glass cartridge fuses and so you can't easily determine whether it's blown or not, you can simply use your multimeter in the continuity mode. We just attach the probes to either end of the fuse, which of course allows the multimeter to determine whether there is continuity through the fuse. If the multimeter gives us a large resistance or gives an error message, then the fuse has most likely blown. You can also test your fuse using the ohm meter setting on the multimeter to check the resistance of the fuse. First, we want to remove the fuse from the circuit and place the probes on each end of the fuse. A lower reading close to zero suggests that the circuit is continuous and the fuse is functioning as expected. As promised, let's go take a closer look at some of the bigger fuses as I have here and see what's inside. As you can see, even though on a larger scale, all of the basic components that we saw in the smaller cartridge fuses are applicable here too. We have copper terminals and brass end caps, and an element which is capable of handling the current and voltage rating printed on this particular fuse. As I mentioned earlier, when you're dealing with higher voltages and a fuse blows, it can sometimes start to arc and jump the gap where the fuse element has blown. And this is where silica sand field fuses come into play as they can quench the arc by filling the gap where the fuse element was previously. And should the arc still sustain itself, it will melt the silica and form a complete blockage within the interior of the fuse. And that ultimately ensures power to the circuit is interrupted. But that's it for this video. If you found it interesting or helpful, you can support me and the channel by clicking like and subscribing for more content. Thanks for watching.